On February 24, 2011, Space Shuttle Discovery launched the International Space Station for its final mission. We have main engine start. Two, one, booster ignition, and the final liftoff of Discovery. A tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. to its back with a seven-minute ride into orbit. Discovery now making one last reach for the stars. Inside the payload bay was the multi-purpose logistics module known as Leonardo, which had brought up supplies many times before, but this time would become a permanent module in orbit on the station, the permanent multi-purpose module. The shuttle also carried the third of four express logistics carriers, as well as the humanoid robot called Robonaut. Maximum pressure reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes supersonic. Discovery Houston, you are go at throttle up. Commander Steve Lindsay acknowledging the call from Capcom Charlie Hoba as Discovery's three main engines throttle back up. Lindsay is joined on the flight deck by pilot Eric Bow and mission specialist Al Drew and Nicole Stott. That's better. Mission specialist Mike Barrett and Steve Bowen. Discovery's three main engines are burning fuel at a rate that would drain an average swimming pool in about 25 seconds. The engines combined with the solid rocket boosters produce more than 7 million pounds of thrust. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, we're standing by for separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Discovery now traveling 2,695 miles an hour. It's altitude 24 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 29 miles. Booster separation confirmed. Discovery's guidance is now converging as the shuttle's onboard computers fine-tune the flight. After attaining orbit, the crew used the orbital boom sensor system to inspect Discovery for damage sustained on launch. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Discovery approached the station. At a distance of 400 feet, Discovery flipped over doing the rendezvous pitch maneuver to allow the station crew to photograph the underbelly of the shuttle. After the RPM, Discovery docked with the station. The hatches were opened and the station crew welcomed the shuttle crew aboard the station. And the first task was taking the express logistics carrier 4 out of the payload bay and attaching it to the S3 truss. An express logistics carrier is an unpressurized attachment payload platform for the International Space Station that provides mechanical mounting services, electrical power, and command and data handling services for orbital replacement units, as well as science experiments. On February 28, 2011, Steve Bowen and Alvin Drew performed the mission's first spacewalk. 
During the EVA, Bowen and Drew installed a power cable linking the Unity and Tranquility modules in order to provide a contingency power source. They also moved a failed ammonia pump from its temporary location to the external stowage platform too. And after installing a wedge under a camera on the S3 truss to provide clearance for the newly installed Express Logistics Carrier 2, they performed the Japanese experiment called Message in a Bottle to collect a sample of a vacuum and additional other minor tasks, after which the EVA was concluded after 6 hours and 34 minutes outside. Flight Day 6 saw the installation of the Leonardo Permanent Multipurpose Module to the Nadir port of the station's Unity Module. The crew would transfer cargo from Leonardo into the station throughout the mission. Bowen and Drew conducted STS-133's second EVA on flight day 7. Drew removed thermal insulation from a platform, while Bowen swapped out an attachment bracket on the Columbus module. Bowen then installed a camera assembly on the Dexter robot and removed installation from Dexter's electronics platform. Drew installed a light on the cargo cart and replaced some dislodged thermal insulation from a valve on the truss. While the shuttle was at the station, there was a discussion about going out and taking a picture of the station with all of the vehicles docked together. But unfortunately for us, no pictures of that ever were taken. It would have been an incredible picture. The shuttle, the ATV, the HTV, two Progress and two Soyuz all docked to the station at the same time. It would have been quite a sight. On March 6, 2011, Flight Day 11, the shuttle crew said their farewells to the ISS crew, exited the station, and sealed the hatch between the orbiter and the station. The next day, Discovery conducted its final undocking from the International Space Station and performed its last fly around before proceeding to perform the final separation burn from the station. On the final day of the mission, Discovery's crew carried out further deorbit preparations and closed the shuttle's payload bay doors. A successful deorbit burn and re-entry ended with Discovery landing at Kennedy Space Center's shuttle landing facility for the final time on March 9, 2011 at 11.58 Eastern Standard Time.
the shuttle was officially retired at wheel stop. Expedition 25 came to a close on March 16, 2011, when Soyuz TMA-01M undocked from the Poisk module with Expedition 25 crew Alexander Kaleri, Oleg Skropochka, and Scott Kelly aboard. After a nominal deorbit burn and re-entry, the crew landed on the frozen steppes of Kazakhstan later that day. On March 28, 2011, after an extended two-month stay at the station, Kanaturi 2 was detached from the docking port by the station's robotic arm. It re-entered and burned up in the Earth's atmosphere two days later. On April 4, 2011, Soyuz TMA-21 launched atop a Soyuz FG carrier rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Sit 5, 4, 3, 2, Booster ignition and liftoff. Liftoff oh, yeah. of the Soyuz rocket as Ron Garin, Andrew Sam Alexander Samakutiyev, and Andre Borisenko begin their journey in space station. As you're hearing, everything looking good so far in the first 45 seconds of the Soyuz TMA-21. Soyuz is now heading toward a link up with the International Space Station two days from now. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Soyuz TMA-21 approached the station and docked to the Poisk module. A few hours later, the crew opened the hatch and began Expedition 28. On April 22, 2011, Progress M09M undocked from the Pierce module. After departing the space station, the spacecraft was used for radar progress scientific experiments, and upon completion of the experiment, the spacecraft was deorbited and re-entered over the spacecraft cemetery in the South Pacific Ocean on April 26, 2011. On April 27, 2011, Progress M10M launched atop a Soyuz U carrier rocket from Site 15 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Progress M10M docked to the Pierce module on April 29, 2011. The link-up between the station and Progress M10M happened just five hours before NASA's first launch attempt of Space Shuttle Endeavour on STS-134, the next mission to the station. <laughs> 